So in this video, I'm just going to look at <clears throat> showing you how I did a uncouple shuffle or an uncouple waltz based on a Zimo sound chip. Took me a little bit of time to do it and I used some of the forums as well to have a look. So first things first, I am using a Merg command platform, but I think you could use a Sprog. And I am using Decoder Pro, which is part of the JMRI package. Now I'm not going to show you how to install these because a lot of people have done that already. So we are only really looking at how to configure these up, partly so that I can remember what I did and how I did it myself. So the first thing I had to go around and look at was the kind of functions that I already had. So now I already knew that this particular loco had a function for lights in both directions and also had a function to control the cab. So on this particular screen, this tab, the alt function map, I can see that I've got headlights for function one and function two. They are using the F0 function. And down the bottom here, um, it says function eight, but it's actually using function um, 03, I believe, on, um, on the actual chip itself to make this work. So the first thing realistically I had to go and do was sort of work out also what um, F keys I had available to myself to use. Um, I did try a couple of them. I did actually use one which had a sound associated to it, mainly for testing. So if I pressed F4 in this instance, the horn would beep and I could see if anything else happened. But as it happened, the actual loco and the sound decoder had a couple of um, functions available that I could quite happily use. So under Decoder Pro, they actually have a tab called um, the Shunt Uncouple tab. So this is where you can go off and configure the shunting mode that's quite common, which is something that basically turns off the inertia from the loco, makes it easier to move backwards and forwards quite quickly. And you can choose some options here. I've got no acceler deceleration, so basically it just completely ignores the uh, settings that are in, in the chip. And I assigned it to function um, F17 in this instance. And that basically means it turns on shunting mode. So if I turn F17 on, the loco will move backwards and forwards quite quickly. What was interesting was here, it also has the uncouple and auto uncouple options. From what I can read in the manual, this first section just here, the uncoupler, is predominantly used for those which have got um, servos in uh, and require power. So I've set that to 80. Um, inside the actual Zimo manual, it says um, that the 10s are one of the settings uh, to do with um, pull-in time. And the other one is if you need to hold power on the servo. So I'm not using a servo, so that's on zero, and they do actually recommend zero for, for a particular uh, uncoupling system. And then the auto uncouple, which is just here, is a little bit more of a, of a complicated beast, and I think it takes a little bit more of experimentation. Again, I think in the Zimmer manual, it does refer to that and says you use 155. That gives you a few options, but if I try to run through these quickly, it does say on the screen, uh, in the hundreds column, one and zero, if you leave it at zero, it doesn't do the pushback doesn't do the tension to relieve tension from the couplings. Um, in the tens, it's uh, the move away time. Uh, it does reference it in the manual. So if you have one, it's like 0.1 of a second. And if you have two, it's an increment. And I think the six is about two seconds um, that it will actually uh, push forward. It will remove itself from there. And then number five is to do with the speed that it moves away. Um, here it says the internal speed step uh, times four. Now, from what I read, that uses the CV3. Well, on this particular loco, if I pop over the CV3, it shows 40. Uh, that's actually quite, quite high. So if that was correct, um, you know, I'd be well into the 128 steps. So I'm not sure if that's actually accurate in its own right. But anyway, this is what I've set up and I'll show you it in operation in a minute. The next step I had to do was I had to assign a function to the uncoupling action. So for this, and it's a little bit of a weird one, I went into lights 
somebody directed me to this and I had to go and find an uncoupling uh, functional output which wasn't being used. So I know that uh, sort of like the first two and the third are being used for lights and cab. This made function 02. I had to click the drop down and change it um, from the standard on off function output to uncoupling. And I've used it for both directions and I wrote that into the CVs. And the final bit for this is I need to, to assign a function key to function function output 2, FO2. And for this I use the Swiss mapping tools. There's a really good article on there by somebody called Paul um, on the RM web, which is what I looked at, but actually Decoder Pro does a lot of the hard work for you. You don't have to use CV values. So here I've just basically chosen function key 11. Um, in forward direction it uses function output 2 and in reverse direction it uses function output 2. Again, I've written this all into the CVs and we can now see it in action. So here we are with the uh, loco. The class 70 I've got here is on. Currently what I also have is um, function 11 is on. Now it's not on uh, momentary, it's on latch mode. Now if I just show you, I'm gonna just start the loco up in one direction or another, just swap it over. And currently I believe it's in normal mode and it should just slowly spool up and move away. Like so. So we've, we've pulled it down. Reverse it to the other direction. Now I'm going to turn on function F17 for me, which is the shunting mode. So I'm going to turn on F17, which is the shunting mode, and you should see it pulls away immediately and it works much quicker. It's not using uh, the inertia of any, any form or fashion. So that's perfect. Now I'm going to try uh, function 11 and hopefully this will go backwards in a little direction and then move forward in the other like so. So it moves back in a little bit. I'm going to do it again. So F11. Well, I'm just going to press uh, F11 on here. I'm going to do the button. It moves back to release tension and then it moves forward. Now, I did have a play around with the settings. I went all the way up to um, 199, and if you use 199, it does actually go a really long way to the left or to the right and in the opposite direction when it's doing the uncoupling. But I think that works actually quite well. Unfortunately, I haven't got any KD magnets available at the moment, or I do have some, I just don't know what I've done with them. And I really wanted to just try it line um, temporarily in the track, uh, move it backwards and forwards. That would be rather super, but I don't don't have any to demonstrate that currently. Anyway, I hope you've uh, found that useful. It is for a Zimo sound decoder. This particular one is the MX644, and that's how I have done it. Um, so if you've got any questions, then please do ask. I will try to answer them if I can. I am no expert and uh, it's taken me a little bit of time, but there's been a real phantom, a real fountain of knowledge on the RM web site that I went on. Put a link to the uh, forum that I was using, the thread that I was using as well. So people can see that as well. Uh, and somebody also from, called Nigel um, helped me massively as well. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. That'd be great. Thank you. See you again soon. Bye.